So in case you missed it, Google wrapped up IO 2025 today, where they showed off several new AI powered features, impressive generative AI, and a really unexpected announcement towards the end. But instead of you watching the two hour long presentation, I've spent some time compiling the best, most relevant features so that you can try them out for yourself and take advantage of them. Drop a like, get subscribed if you aren't already, and let's get into it. Starting first with Gemini. So in IO 25, I think one of the most impressive features was Gemini live camera. Now, I actually do have access to Gemini live camera, so let me just show you what it can do real quick. So now within Gemini, both on iOS and of course on Android, you can tap this button in the bottom right to bring up live. And by enabling the camera feed, it can now look around and see your surroundings and you can ask questions about it. What do you see? I see a camera set up for recording. It looks like you're filming someone against a gray backdrop. Do you have any questions about your setup or is there anything else I can help you with? Yeah, what is that camera that you see? That's a professional video camera mounted on a tripod. It has a teleprompter screen attached to the top, which is used to display a script for the person being recorded. I don't think that's a teleprompter. You're right, that's not a teleprompter. It looks like an on-camera monitor, probably used to see what's being recorded. Do you have any other questions about the camera setup? So yeah, as you can see, the latency was actually pretty low and you can hold a pretty like in real time conversation with the AI. I do feel like the voice uh, isn't quite there yet. Uh, it just sounds a little bit impatient and matter of fact, uh, I think I do prefer ChatGPT's voice a little bit more. Now this was a feature that was debuted in Project Astra last year um, as a proof of concept. So it's really cool to see that they've actually successfully implemented it and is shipping to customers now. And you can actually try it now for yourself if you have the Gemini app. Now I'm not entirely sure how useful the camera feed is gonna be, maybe for people with disabilities, um, it can actually help them see or find things. Uh, but I think what's actually a little more useful is is the screen share feature that they also announced. So if I tap this button right here, I can actually share my entire screen of my phone with Google. And now if I, let's say, hop into an app like this, I can ask it questions. Feel free to ask me anything about the Japanese you're learning on Duolingo. That's the correct way to say. That pastry shop over there is famous in Japanese. Uh, <laughs> Okay, I did not expect it to have a Japanese accent. That's actually crazy. Haha, <laughs> that's funny. So in this case, in the phrase, ano o kasha wa yume desu, uh, there's no na after the yume. Is that because it's not followed by a noun? You're on the right track. You don't need na after yume because it's not followed by a noun. Yume acts as a noun here, meaning fame or reputation. Sono cheesecake wa ikura desu ka? That's right. Is the correct way to ask how much is that cheesecake in Japanese? Was there anything else you wanted to know about this sentence? Pretty good. So I'm working on this script for an iPad review. Uh, could you give me some feedback? Your intro is clear and sets up the video's purpose nicely. You might want to add a hook at the very beginning to grab viewers' attention right away. As you can see, some really cool potential use cases with screen sharing, potentially acting like a tutor for your language or even as a thought partner in more creative works. Now, another recurring theme in the presentation was personal context, where Gemini can actually use personal information about your life, either from your emails, photos, or even from your Google Drive in order to become a better assistant. In a demo with Gmail, they gave an example of a friend sending you an email asking you for a recommendation for somewhere you've been to before. Instead of you having to pull up your past itineraries or maybe bookmarks that you've planned in somewhere in your Google Drive, Google will actually scrub through your drive on your behalf and put together a response for your friend in your typical writing style. Gemini matches my typical greetings from past emails, captures my tone, style, and favorite word choices, and then it automatically generates a reply. Google says that this feature is coming to subscribers in the summer, and Google actually used this word quite a lot, uh, subscribers, which we will talk about the plans that they announced later in the video. Now, another feature within Gemini that they talked about was agentic capabilities. We call it 
agent mode. Now an agent in the context of AI is just basically a system that will do something on your behalf. The example they gave is, let's say you and a friend are looking for a new apartment. Instead of you scrolling through Zillow and spending hours looking for an apartment, you can instead just tell Gemini your requirements and it'll actually not only scroll through Zillow for you, but also put all of the findings in a table and even schedule apartment tours on your behalf. So that is pretty cool. And the way that one presenter put it was, A universal AI assistant will perform everyday tasks for us. It will take care of mundane admin and surface delightful new recommendations making us more productive and enriching our lives. Now taking this concept even a little bit further, there was a highly produced video of some guy in a bike shop kind of like repairing a bike. And in this video, the phone was actually just scrolling by itself, uh, looking through manuals, tutorial videos, even calling a shop on your behalf, I assume with like an AI voice and sort of paints a picture of what Google envisions the future of like a really truly personal and highly intelligent AI to look like. But yeah, these agentic capabilities do seem like they are still a bit further out. Uh, they will be available soon uh, for developers to take advantage of and start building products in. So hopefully in the next few months or years as this stuff rolls out, we'll be able to put it to the test. Now the next thing Google focused on was a new feature within Google search. Up until just a few years ago, Google search was the default go-to search engine for basically the entire world. But now with ChatGPT and different LLMs coming out, Google is facing some serious competition. So this year, Google went all in on reimagining search and sort of rebranding it in a way. They're calling it AI mode, and you can actually enable it in the experimental features uh, part of Google. And when you click into it, it does bring you into a pretty familiar interface, uh, very similar to ChatGPT and other LLMs. With AI mode, you can, of course, ask it complex questions. It essentially does the Googling for you using a technique called query fan out, where it will actually do like 10 to 20 Google searches for you, and even visit hundreds of websites to generate its response. On top of that, because it is integrated in Google search, the user interface actually looks very familiar and clean. And there are some integrations from Google Maps, business profiles with embedded hyperlinks and pages, which makes research a whole lot easier. I actually think that this is a really smart move on Google's side, just because a lot of people still do go to Google search for uh, looking things up. And so now with AI mode directly embedded in Google search, I think it'll lead to a lot more people using this feature rather than having to go to like gemini.google.com, which is a whole separate app. Now with AI mode and Gemini, there are some overlapping features. They sort of do do very similar things. And so Google does have very similar ambitions for AI mode similar to Gemini. Things that we already talked about, agentic capabilities. So Google does envision that AI mode will be able to uh, do things on your behalf, like book event tickets, make restaurant reservations, and even local appointments. It also wants to transform the shopping experience. So for example, you can set a price range for a product that you find that you like and have it track the prices for you. And when that item is within your price range, it'll send you a notification. And with a single tap, you can check out and buy that product all without having to visit that product's website. Google also plans to add personal context to AI mode so that uh, when you're looking things up, it can kind of tailor the results specifically for you. Also within AI mode, they are implementing new ways to visualize data. Uh, and so you can actually ask it to make tables, which definitely makes it easier to research certain topics. Topics. And then Google also announced this new shopping experience called Virtual Tryon, where you can actually upload a reference photo of yourself. And if you're online shopping and you see a piece of clothing that you want to see what that would look like on you, you can just press a button and it'll sort of take the lighting, uh, you know, the fabric, the texture, and actually do a pretty good job of putting that piece of clothing on you. So I, of course, tested this out, uh, and I gotta say I am pretty impressed. I thought it was pretty neat that uh, in my reference photo, I was wearing long pants and my legs were covered, uh, but when I went to try on some shorts, uh, it actually matched my skin tone pretty well. I even threw on a dress for you guys, and I would say that the chest area looks pretty accurate to what my chest actually looks like. Now the next thing that Google got into was all of the generative AI stuff. So the big news was that Veo3 was announced, which is Google's new video generation model. And the big thing with Veo3 is that its understanding of physics is much stronger. So last year at IO 2024, we got to take a look at some videos generated by the first 
generation of Veo. And compared to this year, it is incredible the amount of progress that they've made. Throughout the presentation, we saw some generated videos of the presenters using Veo, but I think the most impressive thing that they demoed this year was native audio generation. That's right. So now on top of generating the video, they're also gonna generate the audio that would go along with that video. They left behind a, a ball today. It bounced higher than I can jump. What manner of magic is that? This ocean, it's a force, a wild, untamed might. And she commands your awe with every breaking light. So in both of those short clips, I thought it was so impressive how the characters and their dialogue sort of matched the lip movements uh, and also the sound effects of like the owl and its wings flapping and also the guy on the boat. I thought it all looked really, really good. Obviously you can still kind of tell, I mean, especially in the realistic image that it is AI generated, but I think this is leaps and bounds better than what we saw last year and really goes to show like how fast this tech can move. As a filmmaker myself, I felt a little bit threatened by this technology, but also a little bit inspired. Like there are some really new ways that you can now take advantage of this stuff. And then Google did a crazy thing and partnered up with two really famous filmmakers and put together this short trailer. Baby's in distress. We need help here. We need to go. Is my baby gonna be okay? We can do everything we can. Am I gonna be okay? For every creature that came before you, from every star that died so that you could begin. So in this trailer, the filmmakers were able to incorporate some real life shots that they got of the actual like actors, but also incorporate some really vivid and textural shots that would have been really hard to create in the real world, uh, just with AI. And it all sort of cut and matched together really seamlessly. Like I think that shot of the baby in the womb uh, was actually generated with AI, which is insane. And then also in the video world, uh, Google announced a new tool called Flow. One of the more complex things when it comes to AI video generation is like, how do you get the character consistency from let's say like a close up of someone to like a wide shot? Like how do you make sure that their features remain the same and that the character looks the same? Well, now in Flow, you can actually build sequences uh, right there in the app. On top of that, you can also generate props that are used in these scenes and those props will remain constant from one shot to the other. And it honestly just seems like a whole new way to even think about how we make videos as a whole. Uh, the whole creative process is just different. You can essentially create whatever you want at your fingertips, which I think is crazy to even think about. Yeah, let me know your thoughts guys, uh, because I feel like this is about to shake up the film industry in like a really big way. Now there were also some huge improvements in photo generation, which is already really good. But now with Imagine 4, you get some even more detailed and richer images that actually work a lot better with words and typography. So uh, it was actually able to create this poster uh, and make some really creative choices like uh, making the text out of bones. And honestly, like looks like a really nice poster in my opinion. They also did a coding demo where they were able to transform this very uh, standard 2D website with just a simple sketch of this idea of making something that is much more interactive. And then in just a couple of seconds, uh, was able to make that a reality and even included some AI generated like prompts on these images. But then towards the end, Google announced something that actually surprised me. I didn't see this coming and that is Android XR. In the coming months, we're bringing Gemini to your watch, your car's dashboard. But what about emerging form factors that could let you experience an AI assistant in new ways? That's exactly why we're building Android XR. Now, while this stuff is very much in its early prototype stage, especially with the in-glass display, Google did actually do a live demo on stage where they showed off a bit of what it would look like to wear these, including sending messages, receiving messages, asking Gemini general questions, 
taking photos and getting directions. Google also name dropped a bunch of partnerships with very reputable brands that they're working with like Samsung's Project Muha headsets, Gentle Monster and Warby Parker to make it feel like it's like actually happening. Uh, so we'll definitely see like in the next few years where this goes. But yeah, that's it for Google I.O. 2025. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, make sure to get subscribed. But I'm curious to know, what do you think about all of this AI stuff? What are your favorite features? And also, how has AI affected your life over the past few years? Leave a comment down below, leave a like on your way out. Again, please subscribe to the channel if you found this video helpful. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.